So good day, everyone. My name is Brian Prophet with the Red Hat Open Source Program Office, welcoming you to another edition of Community Central. Before I introduce today's guest, um, the usual housekeeping notes. We will be um, recording this for uh, posterity, so your questions will get, uh, to get your questions answered, we definitely want you to use the Q&A tool that is in uh, this broadcast platform. If you do that, then we can get to the questions at the end, make sure they're read aloud, and everybody who's watching the recording can see it. Um, definitely vote up those questions. The ones you like the most, we'll order them and or we'll read them rather in the order that have most voted for. So along with my co-moderator, Josh Berkus, also with OSPO, um, we'd like to welcome our guest, Vishwath Benigopal, who is a principal software engineer from the advanced cluster security team at Red Hat. And he's gonna be talking to us today about Kubelinter. Um, Vishwath, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, by all means, uh, take it away. Great, thank you so much, uh, Brian, and uh, thanks uh, to everyone who is watching for taking the time to uh, come and uh, learn more about Kubelinter. Uh, so I am just going to share my screen and take it from there. All right, I'm assuming everyone can see my screen uh, and Brian will let me know uh, if not. Uh, so, all right, so before, uh, you know, before jumping in, um, a quick introduction about Kubelinter and about myself. So I'm Vishwa, uh, as Brian mentioned, I'm an engineer on the Red Hat uh, Advanced Cluster Security Team. Uh, and the history of the Red Hat uh, Advanced Cluster Security Team is that uh, we, were, we are actually the engineering team of a former company uh, you may or may not have heard of called Stackrox. Uh, and Stackrox worked on uh, security for uh, Kubernetes and OpenShift. Uh, and Red Hat actually acquired Stackrox early this year. So uh, Kubelinter is a project uh, that originated at Stackrox uh, and it's continued to uh, you know, receive support uh, and um, uh, resources uh, after the acquisition by Red Hat. Uh, so uh, you're going to see the name Stackrox uh, around uh, to, in today's presentation for a bunch uh, because it, the name Stackrox isn't going away. Uh, the GitHub that Kubelinter is hosted on is still under Stackrox and um, the future community that we're building around the Red Hat uh, Advanced Cluster Security product uh, is all going to be named uh, Stackrox. So that's some, some context for you in case you get confused uh, by the naming. Uh, and so uh, with that background, let me talk a little bit about Kubelinter itself, right? So Kubelinter is an open source tool uh, that uh, whose mission is really to enable uh, people to write production ready Kubernetes YAML files. Uh, now, what does that mean? Uh, let, let me go through the presentation and you'll find out. So uh, quick note on what we'll be covering, uh, you know, just uh, we'll, I'm just planning to go over the tool, do a quick demo of how it's used, uh, explain why you would use the tool, and explain how you can get involved. So what is Kubelinter? Like I said, it's a command line interface uh, for linting Kubernetes objects. Uh, and one of the things we've tried to do uh, with Kubelinter is, uh, you know, um, take advantage of the fact that we can, with a new tool, we can redefine defaults to be more secure. Uh, and if you uh, if you've spent time crafting Kubernetes YAML files, you probably know that in many cases the defaults in Kubernetes are not actually secure uh, because maybe because a security feature was introduced in a later version and you know the defaults have to be backward compatible. Uh, maybe it's because um, they just want to make it easy for you to get up and running because uh, we all know uh, it can be hard sometimes uh, with all the knobs and dials that Kubernetes offers. Uh, and so they let you like get up and running and then add security. And so our goal is, you know, when you're going in production, you want to make sure that the defaults are secure. Maybe you want to opt out of something, but at least the default should be secure. So we try to do that with Kubelinter. 
Uh, and of course, there's a config file if you want like more fine-tuned, uh, if you want to like change the defaults, if you want to add your own custom checks. Uh, and uh, we've really tried to make it as simple and easy to integrate as possible. It's like written in Go, it's one Go binary. Uh, you can download the right one for your platform and it should just work. There's also like a GitHub action, uh, which uh, we think is pretty seamless to use as well. So um, I then went over this again, but you know, uh, why Kublinter? These are the uh, the main uh, advantages of Kublinter over uh, like the main things that we think are differentiators, like just our focus on Kubernetes, uh, the simplicity, uh, the defaults, uh, that are secure trying to educate users on like what kubernetes uh, what it means to like craft a secure kubernetes uh, configuration uh, and the also uh, the other thing that we uh, try consciously to do is to be very helm native uh, because uh, that's how a lot of our uh, users store their configurations uh, as helm charts and so we want to make sure that uh, if someone is storing a hand chart like Kublinter just understands that natively and doesn't require them to do any additional work. Uh, so that's that's a quick overview of you know Kublinter, and I think you'll understand it a lot better uh, when I go through the demo. So that's what I'm going to do now. All right. So. Um, so here we have, you know, um, um, like a terminal where I have Kublinter installed. So you can see, you know, this is the Kublinter. This is the latest development version. It should be functionally equivalent to the latest version, which uh, I think we released earlier this week. Uh, and uh, we also have in this directory uh, one YAML file, which is open on the right. Uh, and this YAML file, very simple uh, YAML file, you know, for illustration purposes. Uh, and it contains like a couple of uh, Kubernetes objects. So it contains a deployment, uh, one which I'm calling non-compliant, one which I'm calling compliant, uh, and one which, uh, and like, and a service account, right? So very straightforward, you know, the sort of thing that uh, you would see all the time if you like had your like Kubernetes configuration, if you, have like any repo with your Kubernetes files, which you're then like going to pass into a command like kubectl create or uh, kubectl apply. So the way it works is uh, when you pass, uh, when you run kubelinter, you just run kubelinter and then the command to run is lint. Uh, and then you pass it like a file or directory. In this case, I'm just going to pass it the directory, but I could equivalently also pass it uh, like the file name. Uh, and you can see, you know, all I've done uh, is run Kublinter lint, uh, and uh, it's found five lint errors. Uh, and uh, the uh, so the first thing I want to note before getting into these lint errors is, you know, uh, th there's no configuration uh, invoked here. This is just the default that you get uh, with the tool uh, without having to without writing like any custom checks or any um, or, or doing anything like very, um, uh, you know. Uh, or like trying to figure out exactly what you want. So the idea is that like there are some defaults that we think are sane and that we want to give you without you having to do any work. Uh, so now let's go and actually look at the errors, right? So here uh, the first error is that the container nginx. So we look at the object and the object is in my namespace. It's called non-compliant and you can see that it's a v1 slash deployment. Uh, so you know it's referring to uh, this one, uh, which is called non-compliant, uh, and it's saying the container nginx does not have a read-only root file system, uh, which is like a, a recommended security practice. Now, of course, fixing these things can be complicated. You may need to fix your application uh, if it does rely on uh, writing to the file system, but in this case, uh, you know we're going to assume that that's okay and try to fix it. Uh, and uh, the way to fix it is you just add set read only file system root file system to true uh, in the container security context. And um, the way to do that is, uh, and you know, you'd normally have to refer to the case documentation, but if you're familiar enough, uh, the way to do that is just take that read only root file system, set it to true over here, uh, and then 
when you rerun the lint command, you can now see there's only four lint errors, and that's because we fixed that one, right? Uh, and then um, I'll go through the others as well because I think each of them, I tried to make it so each of them shows you like an interesting uh, case. So here's another one, which is that um, in the same non compliant deployment, uh, there's a a uh, non-existent service account, which is not found. Uh, and of course, I intentionally named this non-existent. And the idea is that we're actually looking at all the objects as a whole. And the only service account we could find is called my-service-account. So clearly this non-existent service account is like a dangling reference, right? And maybe maybe you renamed the service account before and, uh, the, the, and you forgot to update this name. Either way, like Kublinter has got it for you, you know, before you actually deploy. And you can fix this by updating the name here. Uh, and then if I rerun again, now I can see there's only three lint errors. So I fixed, uh, fixed the second one. Um, uh, the uh, other uh, case I wanted to show, now I'm going to skip this one uh, because it's very similar, you know, to the other one uh, where I just have to set something in the security context. Uh, but I wanted to show this, show you this one, uh, which is um, uh, around the um, uh, the compliant deployment. Now here we have a default check actually in Kubelinter which says do not run your container as privileged unless it's required. Um, now this is interesting because you know, you don't, it's hard to make this like a blanket rule like we have, uh, because there may be containers that you want to run as privileged. So you don't want to enforce this like blanket for everything. But at the same time, we do feel like for 99% of your deployments, like they don't need to run as privileged. Privilege in Kubernetes is a very powerful notion and very few containers actually need, need it. Uh, but for the ones that do, you want to make sure that you can without, you know, your linter like giving an error. Uh, and the way, um, the way that we've, uh, supported that in Kubelinter is, uh, by asking users to create like an annotation, uh, on, uh, their objects, uh, which, uh, which follows like, um, a specific format and uh you know i'll show you how you would figure this out from our docs I'll, I'll go over the docs later but uh if you look here um you'll see uh under configuring kubelinter uh ignoring violations for specific cases you add an annotation with the key ignore check dot kubelinter dot io slash uh tech dash name and so the way you do this is ignore check dot uh linter dot io and then the check name is your privileged container. Uh and then you'd say uh, and then you give a reason as the value. So that that's like your document. You're like forced to document why it's kind of like the GitHub commit message, how they just force you to write something. So you're like this container needs to run with privileges as it accesses the kernel, let's say, um, which is like a legitimate reason you would need to run privilege. And then if you do this, you can see now there's only two lint errors because um, you've kind of fixed uh, fixed this one uh, or you cannot fix it, but you've like ignored it. Uh, and so, uh, you know, you haven't like, made the problem, um, you've made sure that you can run the linter without seeing this problem, but you haven't like hidden it completely because there is a paper trail left here uh, from the fact that, uh, you know, you have this annotation. Uh, so that's a quick demo of, you know, some of our default checks. Uh, I wanted to just also quickly go over like our custom uh, checks as well. Uh, and the way we do that is uh, if you, we have what we call uh, like a, a config file uh, and our config file uh, I'm not going to go super into detail on like how it's configured we have like a whole page in our documentation that lists that uh, but uh, our config file has a few different options so one you know you can choose uh, whether or not to auto add the default checks uh, in that case you know you start with no checks and you have to explicitly add them which you can do with the include and exclude keys uh, and so these control which of the built-in checks uh, you actually get, right? And 
uh, if you look at our documentation, you can see here that we have like, I don't, I don't really have a count, but we have a few dozen um, uh, default checks, uh, which are named uh, with these keys. And you can see in these um, descriptions, like what exactly each of these uh, checks does, right? Uh, and then you all, we also allow you to write custom checks. And the way we allow custom checks is we've defined what's called the notion of a, uh, we define the notion of what's called a check template. Uh, and the, a check template is basically, it's a piece of logic, essentially like a function that works on a Kubernetes object, uh, which can take some parameters. And one of our check templates is called a uh, required annotation. And what this does is um, it allows you to require that all of your objects have a certain annotation. Uh, and the parameter it takes is the key of the annotation. So here, what I'm creating a custom check, it's called required annotation team. It's referencing the template required dash annotation. And if you wanted to know what the parameters of uh, this annotation are, you would actually like go here uh, and find the annotation with this, uh, find the uh, template with this key. Uh, and then you would see here like a JSON that describes like what the parameters are. So, you know, you have, two parameters, one is the key, one is the value, they're both strings. The key is required, the value is optional. Uh, both of them can be rejects, both of them can be uh, negated as well. Uh, and so here what we've done is we've excluded value. We don't care what the value is, but we want each annotation to have a key. Uh, we want each annotation to have the, uh, each object to have an annotation where the key is team. And that's what we have like reflected here. Um, and so now if I go back, uh, to the other folder, uh, and I run kubelinter lint, but this time I pass a config file that links to, you know, my old, uh, uh, to the config that I was just showing you, uh, and then I pass dot to lint the current directory. Um, you'll see, uh, so, so, okay, in this case, I had, like, um, actually, I already have an annotation theme everywhere, so it, it doesn't show up, uh, but let's say, you know, I remove this annotation or I change this annotation to something like not team um, and I run it. Uh, uh, okay, that, I'm not sure why that did not. Um, Okay, so okay, there's like some some weirdness there where um, if there's a substring, it seems to say that say that's okay, but um, uh, and that's because I didn't put like the anchor characters in the regex. Uh, but uh, anyway, you can see that now in the non-compliant object, it's telling you that there's no annotation matching team equals any, which means like there should be some annotation where the key is team uh, and the value can be anything. Uh, and just to like uh, double click on this, you can see if I just run kubelint or lint without the config file, there's only two lint errors. So passing the config file is what triggered, um, you know, this uh, this like new annotation uh, or this new like required annotation team check from the config file to file. Uh, and again, I can I had kind of fix it before, but if I like just put which team owns this, and the idea is like. Uh, if something goes wrong here, you should know like which team, uh, which team's problem it is. And let's say it's like owned by the database team for whatever reason. Um, then you just have to lint errors. Uh, so yeah, that's a quick, quick demo on, on Kubelinter itself. Uh, I'll take questions at the end. I'm sure you guys, uh, have a bunch, but uh, I'm going to just continue with, uh, the slides. Just have a couple more, uh, and, um, and then I'll show you, uh, and then like we'll move to we'll we'll be at questions in just like a couple of minutes. Uh so yeah, the main things I wanted to tell you are um like this is a very high level overview of Kubelinter. There's a lot more it can do. Uh there's a lot more it's going to be able to do soon. Uh we've seen like quite a few adoption uh in in uh from like various teams uh including teams across red hat and ibm uh but also uh across uh, a variety of different companies around the world and it's been uh interesting to see uh you know how many people have used the tool and customized it uh in all their different ways uh kind of the magic of uh, of open source right 
Uh, so we're always looking for more people to join the community. I think our project has definitely got a lot better uh, after community input. Uh, we also try to be uh, very welcoming and beginner friendly uh, in terms of uh, accepting contributions. So, you know, if if you are if you're even like slightly interested in learning about how to send a PR and things like that, we are like super open and. If you look at our like commit history, you'll see that like um, the majority of our commits come from uh, actually contributors who just maybe sent one or two commits uh, for like the specific thing they had and then they moved on. Uh, so uh, definitely a lot of room for that. Um, not The project is not terribly complicated and doesn't have a crazy learning curve. So where can you find the project and how can you get involved? Uh, well, it's on GitHub uh, at this link, uh, which I have open on this tab. Uh, so github.com slash uh, stackrock slash kublinter. Uh, and you can see all the code is here. You know, it's 100% open source. It's entirely written in Go. Um, there are instructions here on like how to build it, how to run it, uh, which I'm not going to go into, but uh, it's it's not complicated. It will work on your system uh, without any issues. Um, and uh, it's under the Apache 2.0 license, so very permissive. You know, you can use it for your own commercial purposes you can use it to have your own op support your own open source project all everything is uh, is fair game we don't uh, we're, we don't restrict you uh, in any way um so yeah if you are interested in contributing definitely check out uh, the contributing.md file uh, and you'll uh, you'll know where to start uh, but the answer is like file an issue if you have an uh, if you have something that you want to change and then we'll respond to you and then you can see the PR. That's like the high level summary. Uh, and then we also do have a Slack, uh, which I had hinted at in the slides as well. And the link is long. Um, uh, should probably create like a short link for this at some point. But uh, for now, you can just go to our GitHub and like click on this link where it says here, and then uh, that should take you to our uh, Slack workspace and Again, you can uh, message there and we try to be like fairly responsive to uh, requests from the community. Uh, and lastly, if you could give us uh, a star, we would appreciate that. That's uh, We've noticed that uh, that creates a sort of virtuous cycle for us where we just get uh, taken more seriously by people who come across the project and that itself, uh, you know, in turn makes the project better. So definitely would appreciate that. Um, one, uh, one small, uh, uh, oh, and the other thing I want to tell you before jumping to the action itself is uh, our docs are hosted in docs.kublinter.io. Uh, so uh, again, the link to this is there on GitHub. Um, all the code for the docs is on GitHub. Actually, it's on. It's in the same repo. Uh, so it's just like in, under the docs folder. It's a bunch of uh, markdown files. Uh, we use something called uh, Jekyll, I believe. Uh, uh, which Gaurav, uh, who works in our team uh, and uh, is in charge of our docs, put together, uh, and and we like publish the docs on this website, and so you can see full uh, documentation on how to install, how to use it, how to configure it, like what the checks and templates are. Uh, so uh, yeah, definitely should have all the resources you need here, and if you see something missing reach out on Slack, file an issue. Uh, we try to like add documentation uh, whenever people notice a gap. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to mention is we do have a GitHub action, so um, uh, which is uh, at stackrock slash coop dash linter dash action. Uh, and you can see it's as simple as this, like put these five lines in a GitHub uh, workflow uh, and you uh, you will have kubelinter hooked into your repository. Uh, the config file is optional uh, again if you want to use the defaults uh, but the directory is required which uh, and uh, by default you know you can just put like uh, a dot uh, and then it will scan like your entire repo uh, so definitely one of the lowest friction ways to to use it uh, if you're anyway like using github workflows and i think that is pretty much all i had presentation wise so Thanks everyone for listening. I uh, hope that uh, hope that made sense and uh, happy to take your questions. Okay, great. Thank you so much. If you want to turn your screen off, so you can yes. see Josh. I know you had some questions for Vishwath. Why don't you get started? Yeah, we have a lot of questions about integrations, though, which was some of my questions too. Um, because obviously 
people are interested in using the linter with their workflow. Um, the um, so uh, let's take a few of the audience ones and we'll sort of move into to mine if if we run through those. Um, so one of the questions obviously is cube linter with ACS. Um, is that a thing yet? Yeah, good question. Uh, it's not a thing uh, thing yet, uh, but it is it's something uh, that we're like thinking about. Uh, so. Uh, I mean, for those who don't know, ACS is like a more um, uh, is a more like live security solution. Like Kubernetes, uh, where Kubelinter works on like the YAML files, and you could theoretically, you know, uh, make it work on a running cluster by like uh, extracting out the YAMLs that are configured and passing it in. Like ACS tries to be uh, something that like a controller on the system. Uh, right now, the code bases are separate. Uh, part of this is due to legacy reasons. Uh, but over the next six months, um, uh, if you've been following the announcements, uh, uh, we have plans to make ACS itself open source. Uh, and I think at that point, we're going to kind of evaluate like what the future of uh, the kind of integrations between the two are. Uh, but at, as of this time, they are separate and there's no integration. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Um... The um, so there's another question about integrations, and actually I want to lead into this. So, because for example, Romain wants to know um, whether or not there's any plugins for IDEs, and yeah. and I think I want to follow that up with saying, hey, um, if somebody, because obviously there's a potentially infinite number of things you could integrate a linter with. So if somebody wants to integrate their thing, if they want to integrate their IDE with kubelinter. Um, where would they go to work on that? Yeah, good question. So right now we don't have any um, any IDE integrate extensions that we built, but we recently took a big step forward uh, to the for this because we uh, added the option of uh, output in what's called the SARI format, uh, S A R I F, uh, and it's a it's a industry standard format that. Uh, is used for, I think it's called static analysis results something format. I think that's what it stands for. Uh, but it's an industry standard format for static analysis tools. And I think most IDEs understand that. So I think now that we support Starif output in Kubelinter, uh, we actually can pretty easily hook into any IDE that understands Starif. Uh, that's my understanding. Uh, I wasn't the one who worked on it, so I don't actually know the details. But yeah, this is a big request we've had. and. Uh, you know, I can see even in the Q and A that it has like uh, it's the question that has the most likes. So uh, definitely, uh, definitely on our radar, uh, but not uh, we don't have one at this time. Uh, but we're hoping the Sarif thing um, makes it e much easier. So who su who supports Sarif? Uh, VS Code. That my understanding is yeah, my understanding is all of them understand yeah. Sarif, and so it's kind of this. Okay this like intermediate format that like they want all linters to produce and then like all the IDs kind of uh, pick that up. So, yeah. Okay, that would be nice. Uh, we'll see if it works. Um, yeah, have, I mean, I guess one of the- tried that yet, yeah. One of the ones I have to ask from the Kubernetes community is, do you know if anybody's built um, a pipeline to use Kubelinter together with Helm? Uh, yeah, I, people have uh, like I've see, I've, definitely, I've, I've seen from some of the issues that people filed, uh, you know, that people have done that, and they usually link back to uh, to the specific repo where they're having trouble. Uh, so people have uh, integrated it. Uh, so I mean, it. it uh, so I, I mean, it, I guess it depends on exactly what you mean. I, what, I, what I'm referring to is people have made it work with their Helm charts, which they've checked into a repo. Um, so uh, I don't know if they've actually like made it run as a Helm hook or whatever, but uh, that's what you were referring to. But they like for people who store their configs in Helm charts have managed to uh, like run kubelinter as like a linter on their repo. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't see how you could run it with the Helm chart directly because the chart allows you to even replace objects and not just values. So the linter wouldn't know what to do with it. You'd have to have the chart produce its output and then run the linter on the output. Um, yeah, so the way, 
Right. Yeah. What we do is we use Helm as like a library uh, and we uh, we allow people to specify like what values files they want to limit against. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that way, the idea there is like uh, you have the chart. Uh, you don't have to like actually render it before passing it to us. Like we'll do that for you, but you do need to give us like what values you want to limit with. Uh, and if you if you don't give it to us, you know, we we'll just use the values.yaml that contains like your defaults uh, and linked against that. Okay, um, one follow-up uh, is, do you have, or do you know if anybody's working on, on autofill suggestions um, for some, you know, for some of the lint items? Yeah, this is a great question. Uh, it's something, uh, it's like, we do have an issue tracking this. Uh, it hasn't been, uh, uh, it hasn't like reached the top of our queue yet. Uh, part of the reason is because of some technical challenges uh, involved here. Uh, and partly uh, we have some uh, some doubts about like how um, how much sense it makes for, I think it makes sense for some checks, but for some checks, uh, like I think, you know, it's harder because you don't want someone to turn off privilege and then find like their app breaks because they were relying on privilege. So I think there are things like that, that considerations like that, that have made us like hesitate, but it is an issue we've, we're tracking. It's something we're interested in, but I would say we haven't put too much uh, thought into it yet. Uh, to the, uh, uh, as far as I know, no one is actually working on it. Uh, so yeah, but if someone, you know, someone listening to this call is like, uh, thinks this would be cool and is interested, like definitely uh, find the issue or like reach out on Slack and uh, we can discuss it because it is, it's just, I think it's just a question of us putting more thought into it and than we have so far. Um, one more question from uh, Jean Francois. Um, what about a GitHub app in addition to the action? Yeah, uh, I'm actually not sure uh, exactly. Uh, do you uh, uh, like exactly what you mean by like a GitHub app? Like, do you mean something that uh, that listens uh, almost to like webhooks and stuff? Uh, if if that's what you're referring to, no, we don't have uh, we don't have one, and I don't. I think that's like um, I I I don't see that as like something we would do because. I would say like the thing we can give out of the box is like the action, uh, which, you know, listens to webhooks mm -hmm. and does things. And I think if someone is building a custom GitHub app, like it's just going to be more custom and uh, the tool is customizable enough that they can do that, but I don't think we would do it ourselves. Uh, one thing I will note, uh, uh, kind of going back to the Sarif uh, thing is um, we actually do have this, um, uh, this integration in our GitHub action where like, uh, if you set it up, you will actually get, uh, um, because of the way we output it, Git GitHub understands it well enough that it will actually comment on your PR with, uh, with like what the issues are in each line. Uh, and this is through GitHub's like security API. Like we basically flag it as security issues uh, in your PR. Uh, so you actually get comments. So uh, I think that's, that's pretty cool that GitHub enables that and we've, definitely hooked into it. So if that's if that's the sort of functionality you would look for in a GitHub app, uh, we have some of that already just through GitHub's like native uh, action. Yeah. I mean, for my part, I'm thinking, hmm, we should probably put this into, we should probably add Kubelinter to Prow pre-submit checks for kns.io. Um, we're not right now. The, um, um, Mind you, not that many people contribute to that. So <laughs> I've been running it on my own. Um, yeah. Yeah, that would be uh, that would be pretty cool, actually. I have never thought of that. Uh, but yeah, that would be a cool, uh, cool thing to do. Yeah. Well, the problem is we'd have to extensively customize it because yep. we do run, we run some things that have elevated permissions because we need them to have elevated permissions. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, it's the um, it's probably the most uh, unusual <laughs> set of configurations because it's it is like gates.io, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
but but I'm just thinking about it. I just went through one thing and somebody was like, oh, yeah, you forgot the security context restriction. And I'm like, oh, right. The um, so. Um, the so I guess one of my other questions is, well, there's been a lot of asking about integrations and that sort of thing. Um, so what are your plans for sort of next interesting features that you're working on? Uh, yeah, this is a good question. Um, I think there's a couple of uh, things. Uh, one is um, better understanding of uh, custom resources. Uh, like as more Kates, uh, Kates is just you know moving more and more in the direction of custom resources. Um, uh, we want to have like a better story for how you can lint those uh, and define custom rules, say for. Uh, you know, one one of the biggest requests we got is for like Prometheus operator, right? Like everyone uh, wants to make sure that it's configured in a certain way. Uh, like, can we leverage Kubelinter to do that? And um, so far, it's not been within our scope. We just looked at like native case uh, and OpenShift uh, objects uh, in cases where like OpenShift has you know separate objects. But yeah, I think custom resources is an interesting one that uh, uh, we care about. Uh, another is a uh, better uh better support for uh like helm uh customizable customizable helm charts so um basically allowing people to specify like an array of values and be like i want this lent this helm chart to pass lint checks under like this whole cross product of values so just thinking about how we specify that um uh, another is um uh, uh, I, I think ID integrations are a big one that's uh, on our like near term radar. Uh, another is um, uh, supporting things like customize, uh, uh, which uh, I actually don't use it internal. Uh, I use it myself and we don't use it internally, so I don't know too much about it, but we've got quite a few requests and I know many people are using that as a way to like factor out their YAMLs. Uh, so those are the big things I can think of, uh, but and there are like a bunch more as well, uh, which we uh, and we track everything through like the GitHub uh, uh, issues. Um, so you know, um, if someone wants to see if they're like interested in some working on something, uh, uh, issues are the best place to start. And again, I want to emphasize that uh, this is slightly deviating from your question, Josh, but I wanted to again emphasize that like we try to be super um, beginner friendly and welcoming so if you are just interested in making like an open source contribution like i think this is a good uh, first project because the code base is pretty simple uh, and uh, if you want to like do something uh, that there's precedent for you can even look at a previous pr and kind of follow that to do your do what you want to do so definitely encourage folks who are interested in like contributing to open source to take a look One other question that I have for my own use um, is right now Kubelinter's linting focuses mainly on security um, uh, lint issues, right? Um, and it's less complete um, in linting for just basically uh, a broken config. Um, uh, for example, missing object references. Um, the um, is anybody working on making it more complete in that direction? Yeah, this is a good question. Um, uh, I think I was initially not sure uh, back when we first built the tool. We were not sure if it if if that was like if that should be in scope or we should just be like no, that should be handled separately. But over time, we become more and more convinced it just makes sense for us to handle it. Uh, and we do have an issue tracking this, uh, and I, uh, I think it's something we should do right now. No one is actively working on it, but it is definitely something uh, we want to do. Uh, and more just, it's more just like question of when we get uh, resources, which, uh, which should be you know reasonably uh, soon, uh, given that we are hiring a bunch of people uh, in ACS who are starting over the next few months and. If we're going to have more resourcing to do things like this, but yeah, that's the answer is yes. Um, Romain, who's asked, um, 
uh, more than a few questions here, uh, says, could Kubelinter use kube control in the future to check for existing objects in the cluster in order to do things like detecting missing object references? Yeah, uh, so right now we're trying to make Kubelinter not directly aware of the cluster because that's a whole set of dependencies, but you can actually achieve this right now by running kube control uh, and then you can do uh, like kube control get whatever and then just pipe the output to kubelinter so uh, what that does is um, you click it just i mean kubelinter uh, you just have to pass dash to tell it to listen to a standard input but uh, kube control will actually produce like a giant stream of yaml that describes everything that's in the cluster and we can lint that uh, now it's not as nice as if you have the source code because you you don't know what file to look at and things like that. But uh, you you will know like object names, namespaces, and stuff. So it's enough to enough to go by. Uh, so that's the way we recommend doing this right now. Well, thank you. That's a whole bunch of information on Kubelinter, um, and and such a cool project. Um, I've been using it myself for a while. So oh, glad to hear. Any last thoughts um, on on Kubelinter and uh, the state of Kubernetes YAML? Uh, no, nothing beyond what I've said. Uh, but I wanted to again like direct, direct people to you know our GitHub and uh, definitely take a look. Uh, get involved. Happy to hear from you. And uh, uh, and uh, the other thing I wanted to say is like. If you're thinking of adopting kubelinter or uh, think of it as you would think of any linter and the way uh, at least we've handled linting for like our code uh, is uh, you know you take in a tool uh, you don't necessarily like turn it on turn on all the checks enforce right at the beginning but you just have the tool have it check a couple things and then like over time add to it and so that would be if if you find like everything you saw today like too overwhelming and scary like that's a perfectly valid way to kind of face something like this and uh so yeah that's i think that's my that's my spiel okay well, 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 thank you yes definitely thank you josh thank you so much for being the co-moderator today we definitely appreciate uh everybody's participation with the questions um, these makes the uh, community centrals that much better. Um, with that, and thanks again to our guests. Um, I'd like to close out this uh, session of Community Central. Stay tuned for additional content that will be coming your way soon. Uh, until then, be safe and have a great day. All right. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, everyone, for attending. Bye bye. <laughs>